Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about finding the volume of solids. When we say solids, we are talking about three-dimensional figures. So that includes, includes our spheres. Make that look a little three-dimensional here so you know I'm talking about a three-dimensional shape. We're talking about spheres. We're talking about cubes. Pretend that's a cube. Rectangular prisms. And other prisms like triangular prisms and cylinders actually fall into this too. They are a type of prism. And we're also talking about pyramids and pyramids can have many different bases. So any pyramid, be that a square base, triangular base, what have you, and cones. So those are the basic shapes we're covering as far as volume. First up are spheres. Spheres are the ones, there's no real like shortcut to try to memorize what the volume of a sphere is. You just have to memorize it. And the formula is this, it is four thirds pi r cubed. The one thing that I do, uh, that does help me remember this when I see the r cubed, I know that's volume because whenever we give our answer, for volume, it's going to be in units cubed because let's say for this example, let's say I have this sphere. It has a radius of six centimeters. When we answer, our answer needs to be in centimeters cubed because that's what we're saying. We're saying literally how many little cubes that are one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter would fit inside this sphere. That's what volume means. So since our units are in centimeters cubed, your formula, if it's a, a sphere, needs to have that cubed as well. It's kind of like a little, that's the only thing I can think of to help you with this one. It is an unusual formula. You just got to memorize it. So in this example right here, four thirds pi r cubed, you're just going to plug in. They're giving you the radius right here is six. You plug that in for the radius. So it would be four thirds times pi times six cubed. Uh, just double check with these. If your teacher wants you to put all these into your calculator and get a decimal point answer, or if they just want you to multiply four thirds times six cubed and leave the pi alone, that's called putting it in terms of pi. So that's if it says in terms of pi, that's what you do. You just multiply the ordinary or plain numbers together and you leave the pi alone. On to cubes. Cubes always have sides that are congruent, that are the same, or edges that are the same. So let's say this was five inches by five inches by five inches. Many math books will present this as volume equals S cubed. It's the most common way you'll see it written. Keep in mind, please, when they say this S cubed, I know a lot of times we just want to memorize formulas and use them and move on. It really is helpful to know where the formula comes from in this case. It's going to help you with the other solid figures. So S cubed is saying this side specifically times that side specifically times that side because these sides represent the three dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. Because that's what we're doing for most of these. We're saying in three dimensions, it goes how wide is it? How long is it? How tall is it? Altogether, then, how many little tiny cubes could fit in it? So that's where this S cubed is coming from. So in this case, 5 times 5 times 5, its volume would be 125 inches cubed. Now, very similar to this, we have our rectangular prism. Now, the formula is going to look a little different in your math book, but it is the same. Actually, it's doing the same thing you are most likely going to see volume equals length times width times height. And what are they doing? They're doing the same thing we just did with that cube, even though the formula looks different. They're multiplying the length times the width times the height. So in this case, six times two times 10. Six times two is 12 times 10 is 120. Units are inches, inches cubed. Now, something that's going to lead us into the next bit of prisms. Let's look a little bit closer here at the bottom when it said six inches by two inches. 
The base of this prism is a rectangle that is six inches by two inches. So you could say what we did is we found the area of this rectangle, which is six by two, we found that area and then we multiplied by the height. So you could say we took the area of the base, which I'm representing with a big B, and multiplied it by the height. That is what you're going to do for every single prism. Now a prism, just to make sure we're all on the same page, is a solid figure where the top and the bottom are identical and they are connected by vertical, perfectly straight up and down, perpendicular sides. So that could mean a triangular prism where you have identical triangles on top and on bottom that are connected by these vertical sides that are at right angles to those bases. It could be a cylinder, which I know we call it by the name cylinder, but it is a prism. It is a circular prism. It's another way of looking at it. Same sort of thing. We have identical tops and bottoms. Those are same connected by these sides that are at right angles to those bases. So this formula, the area of the base times the height is what you're going to use for every single prism you come across, no matter what those base top and bottom shapes are. Now your math book may represent it like this. They may call it base times height or area of base times height, or they may try to make you memorize a whole bunch of individual formulas. They may have formula for a triangular prism, formula for the cylinder, formula. It just, it depends on your math book. I know I can't tell you what your math book is going to say. I wish they were all uniform, but they aren't. So area of the base times the height. This is where your knowledge of area of two dimensional shapes comes in handy. You can't forget these things. They will come back to bite you if you do. If you need to refresh your course on those, uh, video is in the link. Video link is in the description below. So for this example over here of the triangular prism, I would find the area of this base. Area of a triangle is one half its base times its height. And then I would multiply by the height of the prism. Over here with the circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And then I would multiply times the height when that's given to me. All right, on to our pyramids. Pyramids are similar to the cylinders in that there is a repeatable pattern, even if your math book gives you different individual formulas. So a pyramid we're talking about, we have a base and then we have sides coming off of that base going up to reach a point. There can be square pyramids. There can be triangular pyramids. I mean, most of us think of a square pyramid, but they can have any base imaginable. You can have a hexagonal pyramid. No, whatever you want. There's tons of them. And cones, which just like the cylinder, they have their own name, but a cone is in this same family. Family. It has a circular base, but it is just like a pyramid in that you know, it reaches this singular point. And it does follow the same pattern when we're talking about its volume. And the pattern goeth thusly. You are going to find the area of the base, just like with the cylinders and the prisms. You find the area of this base, and that is the basis for your volume. The volume is going to be equal to one third the area of the base times the height. And again, you're going to have to rely on those previous formulas for here, pi r squared to give you the area of that circle, one half base times height to give you the area of the triangle, and so on. You just need to know all of those area formulas for this. So one third area of the base times the height. And this is critical. When they say height, they do not mean this right there, this height. That is called the slant height, that exterior from the point to the down to the bottom edge. If they give you that, do not make the mistake of using that as your height. When they say height, they want to pretend that you made a hole at the top of this pyramid or cone and you dropped a little string down 
all the way to the bottom. They said, how tall, how long is that string? That's what the height is. It's going to form a right angle at the bottom. That's the height. If you see them giving you this height, right, uh, this length right there, that is the slant length. Uh, most of the time, they're wanting you to do a little math right there and figure out the height of the pyramid based on that, based on that measurement. And they're wanting you to use Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus b squared equals c squared to figure out this side of this right triangle. Uh, that's really kind of a separate problem. So if you want me to do a video on that, like walking you through one of those problems where you're finding the volume of a pyramid given the slant height of it, please leave a comment below and I will add that to the list. So that's it. That's all of your volumes for all of your most common solid three-dimensional figures. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.